G'day, you're with Ableton Certified Trainer Mike Callender for ADSR and today we're looking at Wavetable. It's a brand new synthesizer in Live 10 and it uses Wavetable Synthesis. So that is a collection of samples or looping samples that are arranged together. And the arrangement is kind of arbitrary so you can have a collection of um, different kinds of samples put together and then you can cycle through those samples to create really interesting textures and timbres. So let's have a look. So the uh, when you first load Wavetable onto an instrument track or a MIDI track, it looks like this. Um, that's the kind of in the device view. So you can also expand it. So before I expand it, let's have a look at what we've got in front of us. We've got this area on the left hand side. This um, black area is called the visualization. And there are two tabs here, oscillator one and oscillator two. Then in the middle we have a filter section. There are two filters. And on the right hand side we have a kind of a modulation section. We've got modulation sources and envelopes. So we can see an amplitude envelope, two additional envelopes and some LFOs. And then behind that we've got additional tabs. We've got a matrix where we can assign envelopes to different targets or destinations and we've got a MIDI assignments area as well. Now with this synth when you click this little toggle here you can expand the view significantly and get a lot more uh, use out of your screen. So let's have a look at that. So this is the expanded view. You can also uh, grab with your mouse or with your cursor and extend this area across as much of the page as you like depending on what else you've got going on. I'm going to use the whole thing there and I'm even going to shut down my browser from the view and we can see the whole thing in all its glory. So now the view is a little bit different. We've actually got more access to um, some of the parameters and some of the features of this synth. Now the visualization section takes up the whole top section here and we can see both oscillators at the same time. Oscillator 2 is currently inactive. I can activate it by clicking this button, but I'll leave it off for now. There's actually plenty to explore without turning that on. The modulation section now is expanded across the middle of the screen. So we've got the three envelopes that we uh, just touched upon and the two LFOs. And then down the bottom, we've got our filter section and the matrix is uh, accessible without having to flick through different tabs. So that's quite useful. So to get started, let's just make some noise. So that's the sound of the oscillator one playing a pure sine wave. I'll play that an octave up. And another octave up. And back to where we started. So you can hear uh, for the keen synthesis out there, you'll know that that's a, a, a very a common wave type, it's a sine wave, it's a very round shape. And if we look over at the visualization, we can see that uh, area, that round sine wave is actually active or highlighted. So it's very visible to us that that's what's playing. So I'll play it once more time, one more time. So we can hear that wave cycling through and looping. And it's uh, we can't hear any kind of changes in amplitude when we hit, uh, you know, the end or the beginning of that loop as it's cycling through. However, when I combine that playing with the movement of this dial here, I'm going to cycle through these different wave types. So we've got, you know, uh, sawtooths and squares or pulses uh, to be added and, and blended with that sine wave. So I'll play a note. So what we can hear there is that uh, cycling of the loop and also the blending of different wave types uh, with each other. So it's quite interesting. Uh, above this visualization, we have two drop down choosers here. And this is where we can choose the collection of wave types or samples that we're playing back. So we're in basics right now and basic shapes. But if I go over to filter, you'll see a very different uh, visualization there. That's called modern sweep. 
I can change that to acid sore. Let's have a listen. So if you're like me, you start to imagine how things might sound over the course of some playing. If I hold a note and I want it to kind of morph between the original wave type or, um, set or looping sample and through the other types. And I start to imagine um, soundscapes. You know, you could be, uh, if you're making a kind of a really punchy lead or a, a really dreamy pad, you can start to um, get a feel for which collections you like from this selection. So... Uh, I'll choose retro now just to play something different and go robotic. So let's have a listen. So where wavetable gets really interesting is when you start to imagine that movement between the different wave types that are looping or the different looping samples and the assignment of envelopes to certain parameters such as this. So if we assign, for example, envelope 2 to the slider that uh, cycles us through the different wave types, we can get some really interesting results over time and over the course of our playing, depending on how long we hold a note, etc. So um, before we get into that, let's just have a look at the amplitude envelope. So that's uh, where we've got <clears throat> four sections, four distinct sections, an attack section, this first section here, then a decay, then a sustain, and a release. Now, all of these relate to amplitude or volume, so they're going to dictate the shape or the character of the sound as we're playing. So the attack um, relates to uh, this, this first sound that we hear once we strike a note, and um, it reaches a peak up here, and then it drops off a little bit from that loudest point in um, in the decay phase and then stays here at the sustain phase so that relates to the length of time uh, in which we keep our finger on the key or the the note is held um, and that's the sustained note that we'll hear forever if we never let go of the key and then the release time is what we hear uh, the drop in volume from letting go of that key and disappearing to silence so with that in mind, we can apply a similar envelope to this slider and we can, instead of governing what happens with volume, we can determine what happens with which uh, sample we're playing back, which wave type we're using. So let's assign envelope 2 down here on the matrix and we'll just have to line it up to this one here, oscillator 1 position, which is this slider, and we'll assign, uh, we'll click in that box and drag all the way up so I've given it a full value of 100 so it's completely governed by this envelope now and I will change the attack time to be slower I can do it with the uh, with these little nodes here or I can do it down the bottom by changing the numbers in these different boxes so the attack is currently 8.84 seconds so what we should see when I play a note now is over the course of that time we'll see the slider for the oscillator one position will steadily increase and cycle through the different wave types and then once it hits that peak even though I'll keep my note held it will drop about halfway and then stick around in the middle until I let go of the key and then it will drop off again so let's test it out Nice. So you can start to imagine some really complex tones and timbres coming out of this. So you may have noticed that it dropped off quite quickly. We can also change um, a bit of a curve here for that. We could change the uh, decay value and so that it doesn't drop so much when it reaches the sustain phase. We could extend the release time so it takes a little bit longer to cycle back through Although, if we do that, we also need to extend the release time here on the amplitude envelope. Otherwise, we won't hear those outcomes because this um, will be kind of overridden by the amplitude envelope in terms of what actually um, comes out to our ears. So, let's test this one out.
So you can hear a very distinct passage between those four phases of the attack, decay, sustain and release. And it can be quite nice. We can take this a step further. We can assign another envelope to something else. So um, one of my favourite things to do is perhaps assign it to pitch. So envelope three, I go down to the matrix and line it up with pitch. And I click and drag all the way up. I can't get to 100 on this one. I can only get to 48. That's 48 semitones or four octaves. So that means that uh, over the course of this shape, this envelope, I'm going to change the pitch sort of automatically. I'm going to set it up and kind of forget it. So now I'm just going to play that note again. So we heard two envelopes at play then, doing kind of different things. One's working on pitch, one's working on the oscillator one position. And at some point for me, to my ears, that got a bit nasty on the top end. So I'd also like to uh, you make use of my filter, which is down here. So I can just grab this uh, cutoff frequency and I can move it by clicking this number one here, or I can just take the frequency dial. Currently, I've only got one of the filters activated. I could activate the other with this switch, but in this case, I just want to roll off some of the top end and uh, try that again. So let's have a listen. That's a bit nicer and a bit more pleasant to my ears. We've also got a range of filter emulations in these drop-down choosers down here. Um, any one of you who is a, already a Live 9 user might be familiar with these. Um, they're quite neat. I'm going to choose OSR and I get an additional uh, box here, an additional parameter to govern a drive value. So I can give this a bit of a, um, a kind of a saturation that's... Um, a really nice kind of warmer sound or, or it can be really nasty if you like um, and what also happens down here on the matrix when I go into that emulation I get an additional line on my matrix where I can assign the filter one frequency to uh, you know to one of the envelopes or perhaps to the LFO so um, if I sorry actually that was showing the frequency there if I click on um, that parameter it appears on the matrix. If I click on the drive parameter, you'll see that that changes over to drive. So I could do one or one or the other. In fact, let's try frequency first. Let's use LFO one, and we'll go into negative territory just to do something different and give this thing a bit of a workout. Let's have a listen. So we can't see the filter frequency changing on the visualization, but we can hear the cutoff frequency shifting around. It's governed by this shape here. This is also a sine wave, and this is our LFO. And we can change the rate here. So if I click and drag, I can make that happen much faster. And just to test it out, I'll put this into positive territory so it'll work the opposite way. Let's have a listen. I like the sound of that. So that's uh, so many things happening right now. We've got an LFO. You can see that that's actually cycling back and forth here if we um, focus on that section for a moment while it was uh, playing. So that's shifting you know, into positive and negative territory up and down. Um, and then we've got the envelope assigned to pitch and another envelope assigned to the oscillator one position. And we've got the amplitude envelope governing what we hear overall. And we've got a filter taking away some of the, the nasty top-end harmonics. You might want to keep those or you might want to choose your own frequencies to be filtering out. That's completely um, a matter of taste. But that's kind of how this synth works. If you also look around, you can see we, we 
briefly touched on the fact that you can turn on oscillator 2. It doesn't have its own matrix assignments down here, but you can certainly turn that on and uh, blend a different uh, group of samples uh, alongside your original group. You've got uh, the position you can um, you know, dial in a different choice. And we've also got these uh, gain dials or volume dials for how much of that oscillator is uh, blended into the mix. And at the bottom of the visualizations, we've also got uh, kind of an oscillator effects section. So we can choose FM, frequency modulation, classic or modern. So if I choose modern, we've got a warp value and I can dial in something into that parameter and you'll see the shift in how the wave is behaving and there's a fold value as well and you can see what's happening there. So if I play that... And then in addition to that, we can turn on a sub-oscillator so we can get some extra sub-harmonics. That's, that's one octave down. Let's go two octaves down. And what I might do is actually just zero out this LFO for a second so we can hear that at play better. So you hear some really nice warm subs at the bottom of all of that with this sub oscillator turned on. It also has a gain value, of course. And uh, down on the device itself, on the right-hand side, we've got, of course, a volume dial or a volume uh, box. We can change the from polyphonic mode to monophonic mode, depending on what kind of sound we're going for. If we're going for a kind of a punchy lead, we might go into monophonic mode. If we want to play some dreamy pads, we'll um, run it in polyphonic. We can choose the number of voices here. And there's also a unison mode. So I quite like uh, this one, Phase Sync. Let's have a listen. It just adds a nice little phased kind of spread of the sound. Um, which is quite, you know, I, I think it's quite nice. So that's uh, a brief look across Wavetable with its uh, many parameters that can be sort of uh, playing together or working against each other. It's a very powerful synth and a very complex synth, but uh, I really think that this these visualizations and the way it's laid out makes it really easy to um, get your hands on uh, you know, full control of this synth and really do some crazy stuff. So I hope you enjoy it. I certainly am. I'll catch you next time.